In our previous sessions, we were working our way through getting started with the CorelDRAW Graphic Suite X6. And we looked at some of the fundamentals relating to vector and graphics and reshaping objects and moving objects and working with shapes in CorelDRAW. In this session, I want to talk about fills and take a look at what we have for options and how we can apply fills to our vector objects in CorelDRAW. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and create a simple rectangle. Left click, hold down, and we'll just create that right there. I'm going to zoom in so we can get a nice close look at this. And what I want to do is take a look at fills. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a color palette. I'm going to bring this over my workspace. And I'm just going to go ahead and left click and fill that with a red. Now you notice coming from the color palette that I have another option. If I left click and hold down, in about a quarter of a second will show up another dialog box here, a little pop out with different shades of that color. If I wanted a darker red, come down here and click and it'll fill it with that color coming off of my color palette. If we want to get into more advanced fills, we can right click on our object and come down here to object properties. I'll go ahead and scroll up a bit here so you can see that. Right click, object properties. You can also open that docker up here under window, dockers, and object properties. Now here you can see the top we've got the outline but beneath that we've got our fill. Now we've got a couple of different options here. We have a uniform fill, a fountain fill, a pattern fill, a texture fill, and a postscript fill. Now the fact is you're going to be working 90% of your time right here in these three. Let's take a look at a fountain fill and this is a linear fountain fill where the color is blending from the dark red to white. We've got a midpoint here and we've got some control of where the midpoint of that blend is going to be. Coming down the page here we can do things like adjust our fountain steps, fill winding, overprint fill, reverse, etc. Now there's different types of fountain fills. This is a linear and you'll notice if I come here and click and hold down in this little color chip, I can change its position and move it around interactively through the object properties docker. Next to that, we have a radial fill. And you can see if I left click and hold down, I can move that around here also. Then we have a conical fountain fill, which kind of comes to a point and I can left click, hold down and move that also. Then we have a square fountain fill and the same I can do here. I can change my starting and ending colors. If I wanted to go from, say, red to yellow, I could do that right there. And once again, we can change our midpoint. Now, there's two types of fountain fills available here in the object's properties. And that is your two-color blend, and then you've got your custom color blend, and that will change your interface. Here we've got a two-color blend. Now, if I click on this yellow, you see current color is yellow. If I want to change that back to a white, come here and select my white. If I want to get to additional color options, I can come and click on more and go in through my palettes, my mixers, and my models. Go ahead and select cancel. There's also a color dropper down here. If I want to select a color that's in my workspace, but not in my palette, I can come and click on that color. And you can see we just changed that right there. If I want to add additional colors to this color blend or this fountain fill, I can double click right there and now I've got another color and I could make that, let's say, a yellow. And I start to get a very different look in my fill. I could create yet another one here. Double click and fill that with red. As you can see there. Now, when we're dealing with this in the object properties, Docker, it's kind of cumbersome, if you ask me. And I really don't want to default to going through this method for working with my fills. But there is another tool all the way down here in the bottom called the Interactive Fill Tool. And if I click that, you'll see some handles come up. And then you'll see my properties bar change. Now, working with the Interactive Fill Tool, I now have much more interactive and dynamic control over what's going on with this fill. I can change its size radically. I can also do things like come into a color palette and left click, hold down, drag. Let's say you want to turn this red to a purple release. Now that's a purple. I can move that over 
and change the size of that. I can left click, hold down here and rotate and I can do the same over here. I can slide these color chips around and change the way in which this fill is set up for my object interactively. Now let's take a look at the application of a fill and I'm going to go back to a uniform fill just by clicking on red through the interactive fill tool. I'll go ahead and select that. I'm going to left click, hold down, drag and release. Now I'm going from red to white. I come down here and get a yellow, left click and drop that in there or I could come back in here with this selected and just simply click in my color palette with a left click and that'll change that color. So this interactive fill tool is very powerful. As soon as you get outside of uniform fill, typically I'll start working with this tool as opposed to working through the Docker. Well, there's a lot of information and settings here that aren't available with the fill tool, such as my fountain steps. It's still much easier for me to work with the interactivity of this tool. Change this to a radial fountain fill and now it becomes round and then I can manipulate that. Now let's take a look at our pattern fills. I'm going to go ahead and click here. And we just filled with a pattern, but because we're in our interactive fill tool, we'll see that the pattern shows up with some handles around it. Now this is a seamless pattern. I want to click off and just click on this and you'll see that if we change this to, let's say, let's go with perhaps this pattern here you'll see that I don't really have any interactive options here in the properties bar for dealing with this pattern. I can change some things here and I can go down here into some other information. I can skew and set my rotation down here. Go ahead and left click and drag this a little bit and you'll see that that'll change that. And yes, I can change these here in the fill from the object's properties. But if I go to the interactive fountain, the interactive fill tool, you can see that I can actually do this all interactively and you'll see all the inf information change over here in the object properties docker. If I want to radically change the size of this pattern fill I can left click drag down make this very small or I can drag it out and make it much bigger and I'll get an interactive live preview. I can also reposition left click and hold down in the center and reposition where we're starting with this pattern fill in my fill. I can also skew like this as you can see here on that. And we also have a properties docker for a pattern fill up here at the top of the page. Now we've got some fills here that are known as texture fills. I'll go ahead and apply one of those and you'll see we get the same. We've got our interactive handles from the interactive fill tool as long as we've got that selected. If I click off, we're not going to have that. If I click on this, and come down here, we're not going to have all the interactivity that we would have with the interactive fill tool. And then finally we've got our postscript fills. Now working with these fills, then we've got none here. You'll want to take some time to experiment with all this and get comfortable with the interactive fill tool. For example, with the interactive fill tool, if I want to make a metallic look I can make that very easily. I can left click, drag down one side to the other. I can get some gray here, left click, drop that there. Let's put some gray over here on the other end. And then I could just put some gray color chips maybe every inch or couple inches going across here. Drop one there, drop one there, and another one there. Then go with my white, drop a white there maybe make that a 10% gray so it's not quite so hard. Do the same thing here and 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 I'm making a very quick metallic looking fill. Let's say that I wanted to add some highlighting to a graphic object, for instance an apple. And I'll go ahead and go to my advanced tools I'll go to design base and I'll go to all categories. Actually, I want to go, let me see, I'm going to do a search for Apple. And we'll go ahead and do a search. And we didn't get anything there. So I want to go with fruit. Go ahead and go for a search here. 
I'm going to go to all categories. Ah, I'm in templates. I want to be in clip art. Here we go. All categories. And then I'm going to come down here to, let's say, I'll just go ahead and do a search for fruit. And here we go. Now I've got an apple. I'm going to go ahead and double click that and I'm going to go import to my current document. And let's say I wanted to add some highlighting and shading to this apple. Here I've done a metallic effect and I want to go back here and take a look at this apple. We'll go ahead and click on ungroup. I'm going to ungroup all. I'm going to take this apple and I'm going to go to the interactive fill tool and I'm just going to left click and drag right across here. Now this comes in as a linear by default. But I can come over here or I could come over here and change it to a radial. Come here and go to radial. Now you can see I've started to create some highlighting for my apple. Let's say that I want to go from a little bit of a darker red to a bit of a lighter red. Instead of that I'll go over here click on my white, come over here and click on pink and that'll soften that up a bit got a midpoint here I can left click and slide that in as you can see there let's say I want to go with a bit of a darker red here into a brighter red and then into my pink come over to my red hold down for one second come into the darker reds here left click hold down drag that and release that on that chip and that's going to change that color then I could come in with a standard red drop that right there now you can see my midpoint went away but I've got a very nice soft highlighting touch on my apple. And what I've just done is I've added some depth to a flat graphic. It no longer looks flat. You can see a highlight here and then there's some shading over here. Let's say with my shading I wanted to have that blend in to my regular apple. I could go with my interactive fill tool, left click, drag that out to say right there. Now I'm going to a white there, but let's say you want to change that white on this fill then all I need to do is go back to my object properties docker and I could go to this white come to say this eyedropper come over and click on this red in my apple and you can see how I've affected that shading doesn't look that good but I just wanted to present that to you go back to the original darker shading there so this will wrap our session on the introduction to fills for your, after, for your vector objects in CorelDRAW X6. Once again, we're working on the fundamentals and we're going to try and keep this simple so we didn't go really deep, but we did cover a lot relating to how we can work with our fills in the object properties docker and with our interactive fill tool and our color palettes. Go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session.